the December 13th, 2021 Metropolitan Traffic and Parking Commission meeting. If you are not satisfied with the decision made by the Traffic and Parking Commission, you may appeal the decision by filing for a writ of certiorari with the Davidson County Chancery or Circuit Court. Your appeal must be filed within 60 days of the date of the entry of the Commission's decision. We advise that you seek your own independent legal advice to ensure that your appeal is filed in a timely manner and that all procedural requirements have been met. All right, we're gonna seek approval of today's agenda, but the, we need it modified to reflect a last minute item, which is item I relating to a quiet zone by a railroad track. So is there a motion to the approve the agenda as modified? So moved. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. It has been approved. Uh, ask approval of, to, of the minutes of the November 8th, 2021 meeting. So moved. We have a first. Second. We have a second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Approval of the consent agenda. Please note that items on the consent agenda will be voted on at a single time. No individual public hearing will be held, nor will the commission debate these items unless a member of the audience or the commission requests that the item be removed from the consent agenda. Are there any items of note on the consent agenda people would like to discuss independently? Sarah, yes. May I pose a question? Um, yes. There's an item that I am in support of, but I have a few questions about in a more general sense okay. rather than the matter in particular. Is it good to remove it from consent for purposes of discussion or just wait till the end for just a discussion matter? I defer to you, Chair. Legal counsel? Um, if you have a, you know, an in-depth in discussion that's desired, then I would say like something that could substantively impact you or your colleagues um, a decision to vote on the matter, then I would say it's probably best to remove it from the consent agenda. If it's something where um, really it's just kind of an information only question, I think the letter approach might work as well. Okay, then I will, um, I will leave it on the agenda. I am in support of item A, but I did okay. want to have a point of discussion. Okay, right. we can ask questions about it when we get to that point. Okay, anyone else? Is there any member of the audience? Okay, all right. Then I will uh, move for, uh, let me read the consent agenda, then I'll move for approval. Item A, a speed limit change a request for the reduction of speed limit on McGavick Pike from Lebanon Road to Elm Hill Pike from 40 miles per hour to 35 miles per hour SR 1478625 requested by council member Syracuse is he here okay just checking B authorize an always stop control a request to establish an always stop control at the intersection of 19th Avenue South and Edge Hill Avenue this is SR 1450914, requested by the Vanderbilt University Police Department. It's in Council District 17. Item C is to modify a parking zone. A request to modify the existing parking prohibition on 26th Avenue, Eastern Side, Fairfax Avenue, the Ackland Avenue from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. and 2.30 to 3.30 p.m. 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. and 2 to 3.30 p.m. SR 1474109 requested by the Metropolitan Nashville Police Department. Is this by Aiken School? Yes. Okay. All right. Item D, speed limit change. A request for the reduction of the speed limit on the following streets within the Banbury Crossing neighborhood. On Banbury Station from Edmondson Road to Banbury Crossing from 30 to 25 miles per hour on Banbury Crossing from Banbury Road to Osmerna Road from 30 miles per hour to 25 miles per hour. SR 1472147 requested by a resident. And item E, authorized stop control, a request to establish directional stop control at the following intersections. On Trevor Street at 33rd Avenue, on Trevor Street at 35th Avenue, on Felicia Street at 33rd Avenue, 
This is SR 1477715 requested by a resident in Council District 21. That is the consent agenda. Uh, Council member, did you want to make your comments before we vote? No. Okay. All right. Any? Okay. I ask for approval. So moved. We have a first. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? It has passed. Okay. New business item. Item number F, which is a parking meter removal to authorize the removal of four parking meters on the north side of Elliston Place at 2205 Elliston Place, requested by Barge Design Solutions. Is there a picture of this? I guess Corby's not here. Okay. Is there any staff comment on this, Mr. Hammond? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, the picture is up in front of you now in, in a schematic form. Uh, we do have some design plans we can pull up, but our understanding, and the applicant is here to speak in more detail, uh, our understanding of this is it is a, a development proposal that is in this block uh, of, of uh, Elliston Place. The, the development is occurring behind the existing storefronts, and uh, this parking uh, restriction was requested as a safety consideration as a fire zone, fire lane by Metro Nashville Police, uh, excuse me, Fire Department. And so that's about as much as I know about it as part of the conditions of approval that was approved as, um, as, a, as a fire lane subject to the approval of this commission. Okay. Um, and you're, are you here from Barge? Yes, sir. Could, yes, if you would come forward and... State your name for the record. My name is Drew Larson. Okay. Can you turn your mic on, please, sir? There you go. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. My name is Drew Hardison. I'm with Barge Design Solutions. And what's the proposal, please? The proposal is to remove four on-street parking spaces uh, so that, as just as Mr. Hammond said, uh, there will be 90 apartment units that are that will be constructed behind the existing storefronts. The existing storefronts uh, will be renovated as well, but it is to provide aerial access uh, for the fire truck um, okay. for the apartment building. <clears throat> behind behind the apartment building is an alleyway, which would not be wide enough to provide that uh, aerial access. Okay, thank you. But there's no plans to like try to because what's happened before in the past is meters been removed and then there's a request for ballet stands or some other kind of no item. sir no sir okay. just making sure yeah. any other questions from commissioners yes council member No, uh, if I understand the question correctly, yeah, they will protrude over the existing storefronts, but there's no separation between the, the proposed um, apartment building and the existing storefronts. Is that what you're asking? Well, it looks like any of the traffic Right. Um, so there, there is uh, kind of an entryway into what will be their lobby. Um, it is not in line with that. It is off to the side of that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, the intent of that entrance is really on, only for a pedestrian entrance. The, there are, is 
uh, access to the garage back in the alleyway. So, you know, the intent is that, you know, users of the apartment building would, would park in and out of the parking garage in the back. Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. Are you, so you're referring to like a lay-by type drop-off area? Yes. So there, there is not one proposed at all? If that happened, but that's, we're, we're not providing a, a lay-by drop-off area at all. So I guess if it were to happen, sure, it would happen in that in that location, but that's that's not necessarily the the design intent, is what I'm saying. Fair. Well, um, I, I agree with you. I think I think some of that activity will happen. I think the question for us is, is there a way to sign it as a coincidental use? Um, I'm not sure we can do that if the fire department is requesting, you know, four car lengths worth of, worth of space. But I agree, nature abhors, abhors a vacuum, and, and that type of activity uh, likely will occur. As long as it's drop-off and pick-up, and not loading zone where someone may leave a truck for 10 minutes, you know, that would certainly be a problem. Uh, if, if loading happens in that area, I think for us, it's, um, it's probably foreseeably something that will happen, but I, I don't think it necessarily presents a problem in that instance. I don't, I don't know that we, we did not put that condition of approval, although I think it shows up on the site plan. And so at that point, it becomes part of that approval process, that it is, in fact, a part of the site plan. And so then, because you're expressing there's no design intent, BARD is not going to come back and then ask for a loading zone or, I mean, where is the loading Correct. zone for this building? Correct. Yeah, it, it would be on the alley side within the garage, yeah. Is there a plan once, if this is approved and we remove those meters, will there be markings on the street indicating it's a fire zone? Yes. Signage? Okay. Yes, we will have signage as well as a, a stripe as well to um, convey, you know, that this is indeed a fire lane. Are there any other questions, comment? If not, is there a motion to approve? We have a first. Is there a second? We have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. It's been approved. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Hardison, Thank for you very coming. Much. All right. The next item is authorized parking restriction, a request to prohibit on street parking both sides of Lincoln Street from Lafayette Street to Perkins Street, requested by the Metro Nashville Police Department. Okay. Staff, any comments about this? I will do my best to convey what, what has been told to me about the, the nature of this location and this issue. On Lincoln Street, uh, it, it sits directly across Lafayette uh, from uh, MDHA housing, and we understand that there is activity whereby people are parking on the side of Lincoln with no uh, intent to to use land uses adjacent to Lincoln, running over in, into the complex, coming back uh, to their parked car at Lincoln and, and going on their way. And um, this is a request by MNPD to try and limit some of that activity. They're working with the business there that you see on the corner of Lafayette and Lincoln uh, to try and quell some of that activity. And so uh, the request is that uh, we I have a regulatory no parking on both sides uh, of the street uh, that would help them with that issue. All right. Thank you. All right. Any other comments? No, is there a motion to approve? Yes, uh, council members. Sorry. I have a question. Yes. So regulatory
That's correct. It, it, it wouldn't even necessarily have to come back. The reason why we need to come to you on this one is because uh, this street is wide enough to where a lot of times we can do this administratively if the street is narrow enough. But in this case, it does not meet those conditions. And so we need, we need your approval uh, for a, a full restriction of parking. But yes, as land use changes, if we were decided to put meters or anything like that, uh, that, could, that would come back and be revisited to reopen that. We can restrict parking on both sides of the street if it's 20 feet or less. And anything above 20 feet comes here? No, 20 to 30 we can restrict one side and anything above 30 comes here. Okay, thank you. So, thank Mr. You. Hammond, um, so how wide is this street? I don't think I have that uh, directly in front of me. And our, our uh, engineer who oversees the technical um, site visits and all is not here either. We can certainly get you that information. Okay. Is there a, any other comments? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. All in favor? Okay. Any opposed? It is approved. Okay. Thank you. Um, Next item, item H, authorize a loading zone, a request to establish a loading zone on the east side of South 9th Street at 901 Woodland Street, Tuesday to Friday, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Saturday, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. This is SR1473847 requested by business owner. Is the business owner here? Is anyone here to speak to this matter? Please step forward and state your name. Hi, uh, I'm Sam Jett, and I'm representing the business, in this case is uh, Joyland. And uh, this corner on 9th, um, it's an incredibly busy set intersection. Uh, yeah. Is this better? Uh, it's a very busy intersection um, <clears throat> with no zone for any of our vendors to drop off or unload their goods. Uh, so in the, they're currently parking in the middle uh, turn lane of Woodland Street. Um, and then 9th Street itself is, I, I think, a, I mean, it seems to be a, a fairly narrow street, and there's parking on both sides of the street, uh, and it is uh, increasingly difficult to have two cars go back and forth on that road with both cars or parking um, taken up. Uh, and with the amount of traffic, it's, it seems like it's starting to become a dangerous intersection with the amount of pedestrian traffic as well. Thank you. S staff, is there... Any report, comment? Uh, just that what's been requested is is a 60-foot loading dock. That is um, roughly reflected in the, the little red line that you see there. That would take about, I guess it would be a quarter of the length of the block between Woodland and Main Streets along 9th. It's half of the block roughly between Woodland and the alley access. This building does have good alley access, but uh, as... as uh, was noted this is a, a very congested area, particularly around the middle of the day and lunchtime activities and so forth. Uh, we felt like it's a, a prudent um, addition to have loading zone there at the corner for three spaces. Any comments from commissioners? Yes, council member. I kind of forgot it was up there. Um, Thank you, sir. So uh, from a loading perspective and the parking that's back behind and the alley access, can you speak to is so folks that are making deliveries to your business are not able to utilize the, the parking lot in the alley behind? Can you just kind of speak to that? Uh, yes. Uh, beside it being uh, half a city block away, uh, there's actually construction happening in this street uh, or sorry, in the building. Um, on the corner of Main Street and 9th, the, the large uh, little uh, 
pulling up to the left there. Um, and it is taken up by a, a construction dumpster and uh, vehicles for construction. Okay, so understood, but that's a temporary condition. So I'm just trying to understand this building as designed did not provide your business a place for your vendors to deliver things internal to the parcel. No, I, I would I would say not in a uh, an easy access. That's more than a hundred yards away, and um, between our bill our business and the WeWork, which is directly next to us. Um, the unloading and loading of mail and parcels and goods is pretty difficult. Okay, thank you. Any other comments? Is there anyone else here to speak about this matter? Yes, I'm here. I'm an attorney in Nashville and I attended the Oh, okay. I'm just trying to see. All right, so you're in favor of this? Yes. Okay, just trying to. All right. I'm just trying to make sure if there's anyone else here that they're heard. So, okay, thank you. May I ask a question of staff? Do you all know if there's residential permit parking um, in this neighborhood? I do not think that there is. I'm looking at, at Ms. Marsh who says there is not. Uh, I do think it has been discussed. Some of the feedback we got referenced that, that there had been a discussion of that in the past and was decided not to go forward with it. The comments that we received alluded to people, you know, parking in front of homes where there are no driveways and the homeowners uh, did that. I didn't know if there was any update or discussion with the council representative or how to... <laughs> Make that they had you know, how to merge the the growth opportunities with with home ownership living in that area. I know it has been discussed, but there's currently no active proposal for that. Is there a motion on this item? Yes. Uh, yes. My question would be: I see the times you have would be for five days a week and twelve hours each day. Are you getting deliveries all during the day, all five days? Uh, we we get deliveries because it is a restaurant. We get most of the time our deliveries end around six p.m. Okay. I, I wish it were sooner, but uh, okay. Yes, Councilman. Just my question is similar. So I guess I mean it. It is a very wide range so is it um I mean, it's solely for deliveries i mean or it, you're saying most of your deliveries come after 6 p.m but then we're making this a loading zone for 12 hours a day some deliveries are to to 6 p.m i i would say the ex, the reason we chose a, a more extended time is uh also to help ease the congestion of that that intersection because from 7, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. on those days, it's, uh, it's quite By busy. ease the congestion of the intersection, what do you mean? Uh, re reduce the amount of cars on that street, specifically right there in that section. Uh, okay. Um, I guess, staff, I have a question then particular to time frames. So I know that sometimes when we have loading zones, we kind of confine the hours and then folks can work with vendors. This is a pretty wide range in a area with a lot of uses and residential adjacency. So if you could just speak to the reasoning on the timing, please. Well, our, our expectation would be that there is delivery act activity during that time frame. If there's not, then it's certainly within our purview to shrink that and we can do that here today. Uh, for staff, is there a, um, would you be able to provide us maybe some examples of um, other loading zone times that have been established in this neighborhood or in this area of town? We could. We could certainly do that. I, I would say it also is um, particular to the business. I'm not 
you know, um, acutely aware of the need, delivery needs, uh, but this was what was on the application. But certainly we can provide a, a survey of, of those through this part of East Nashville. Yes, council member. I guess my question would also be in the application. I mean, are we prompting people to confine their hours specifically to a likely delivery time? Or are we just saying, what would you like? And then people say 12 hours. It uh, should be confined to the delivery time. But but for us to, to follow up and check that, it, it's difficult, you know, without having, um, you know, that zone in place. We can follow up once the zone is in place and I, and I suppose do some observations and see how often is that delivery zone occupied. But short of that, um, we are kind of limited to taking it at face value. I guess my question, can I redirect to the applicant, um, would be, I mean, again, are, are you just sharing that you, you have get deliveries all throughout the day? Is it possible for you to confine your deliveries to certain tighter windows? <laughs> it, it, yes, we, we would actually prefer it, but it's been proven in the last year and a half since we've operated in the space that our vendors, particularly alcohol vendors and food vendors uh, due to whatever staffing crisis is and all these other things are having difficulties adhering to any type of schedule that we've recommended. Okay. And then I guess my last question, yes, Mr. Chair, if I may, what? again, new to the commission, but do we ever do this sort of like provisionally? I mean, we don't have meters here, so this is kind of reversible or we could look and see how this is working. Um, I just, I don't know what conditions, I mean, is it once approved here, it's just like that in perpetuity unless somebody comes back or how do we kind of uh, have a interim evaluation? Well, I, one, one thing to consider, I think I'm right in this and Ms. Costonas can correct me, but um, this is, a, is, this is a, uh, a permitted condition. So there is a fee associated with this that the applicant would pay. So I, I think it's based on a, a 12 month uh, application. So if it were to be granted, then they would pay the fee and, and I think they would expect some assurance that that would be in place for 12 months. I would also point out it is not exclusive use to this or any other business. The applicant, uh, this would become general purpose loading in this area. I've got a question for Mr. Judd. Um, yes, ask why. Here on the application you put uh, state why you feel the zone is needed, and um, you stated that uh, the restaurant needs additional parking spaces to help with carry-out services. Is the intention to use this loading zone for carry-out services? So there is, uh, I do believe that, uh, yes, yes, there will be a good um, chance that people will park in the space in that space to run into the restaurant to pick up order for delivery as it stands now they're parking uh, just finding wherever they can commissioner woods you had a question I'm gonna make a motion for approval when it's time okay um, is there any further discussion Uh, can I make a motion for yes. approval that, uh, if needed, we'll evaluate in 12 months when the when the permit application comes up again? I mean, if there's something you say that needs to be changed, can staff have the flexibility to do that? Certainly, we're open to doing that. Um, if that needs to be amended into the into the motion, um, we don't. But if that's already your process, then it doesn't need to be put in uh, unless someone brings it back up to us at that time realistically we're not going to come back in and, and reevaluate it okay now we would have we would come back and and uh, ask for a, a reapplication I suppose in order to to recollect that fee for that year mm -hmm. uh, so you would have that but but otherwise that would not come back to the commission once it's established as a loading zone okay All right You've made a motion to approve. Most, I make a motion to approve the staff recommendation. All right. Is there a second? Second. We have a first and a second. Any further discussion? 
Yes, Council Member. Can I amend um, Ms. Wood's motion just to address your concern there? Because I think what Mr. Hammond is saying is they'll just come back in a year and there won't be any evaluative process. So, well, it's my understanding if it needs. It's just from looking at this from experience, someone will come back if they say this is not working. But I'm going to share from experience. I don't think we have sufficient staff to review this stuff, and we don't do that by default. One would hope that we would do that. We would say, oh, you're back. It's a year. How did this go? Or we went and inspected it during the pro Like, I, I don't even know where that feedback goes. Mr. Hammond, can you comment as to the process and what would happen say this was approved 12 months from now well I, I would give you a scenario if if at the end of this 12 months we have consistently received complaints that maybe it's being abused or it's displaced you know this parking into the neighborhood and um, you know and, it, and it's kind of been a problem area certainly we would review it at that point but short of that uh, as as um, I think we would typically uh, observe these things kind of grow in as part of the neighborhood over time, it becomes normal and, and we don't hear much from them. But if it did, uh, certainly we could evaluate it at that time as we considered whether or not to renew it as a loading zone. Mr. Chairman? Yes. The, the code section does speak to that issue a little bit, so I was going to offer to read it in case yes, it would be Yes, please. Um, so 1248020C says, all permits issued for such loading zones shall expire one year from the date of the erection of signs. The commission shall not maintain any such sign after one year from the date of erection unless the owner agent or lessee shall pay to the commission a fee of $30 per each automobile space in advance annually for the maintenance of such signs. The commission shall remove such signs when the payment of yearly maintenance fee shall be 30 days in arrears. The commission may also remove such sign whenever public convenience or necessity warrants the same after 15 days notice of such intended removal is given to such owner, agent, or lessee. Okay. Thank you. All right. Council member, you satisfied? I don't wish to amend the motion. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we have a first and a second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Abstain, please. Okay. We have one abstain. abstention. Please note that for the record. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Next item. An ordinance approving an agreement by and between the Metropolitan Government, CSX Transportation, and Nashville Phase II Property Holder, LLC, for the construction of roadway and quiet zone improvements at the Chestnut Street and 4th Avenue South Railroad Crossing. Council Member Sledge. Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Commissioners, um, for considering this. Uh, this is... Uh, Six years in the making and urgent at the same time. Um, so, uh, as you can, as you'll note, this is two railroad crossings that have quiet zone improvements put forward. There's been a private property holder who is paying for both of these crossing improvements um, and has been working very diligently with CSX and with the fed, federal government over the last, I'd say, year plus, just on the paperwork on this thing. Um, I'm asking for your recommendation today so that we don't have to defer it a month at council because if it doesn't come before you today, um, process-wise, it would have to be deferred a month at council. Um, and I, quite frankly, after so much work has been done on this, I don't want to take any chances that something gets screwed up. So I would ask for your uh, recommendation. Move to approve. Thank, thank you, council member, for coming. I can speak to... I've managed property downtown where there's been these kind of crossings and the noise is quite uh, rattling. Yep. So we have a first. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? It has been approved. Thank you, Councilman, Thank you. for your efforts. I'm sure the residents will be grateful. Thank you. Okay. Next item. Introduction of Mr. Brad Freeze as in... Dots, Chief Engineer, Staff Reports on Traffic Calming, Parking Management, etc. Mr. Freeze here. Hello, Mr. Freeze. Hello. Welcome to our meeting. Uh, thank you for having me. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Well, thank you for having me. I, I won't take much of your time. I just wanted to give a short introduction of myself. Um, my name is Brad Freeze. I started November 1st as the Chief Engineer of the Nashville DOT. 
Uh, before that, I spent 19 years with the Tennessee Department of Transportation. So, uh, and I, I really came up in, you know, working at the Tennessee DOT in traffic, in traffic design, traffic signal design, really focused a lot on technology. Uh, in, in, so that, I can geek out for, for days when we're talking about technology, so I, I really enjoy that. So the last nine years at, at TDOT, I was focused on starting up what's, what is called their Traffic Operations Division at TDOT. So it was really a culture change for the DOT. Our, our uh, chief engineer at, at T Tennessee DOT always says it used to be pave it black and don't look back. Uh, we want to move for you know move forward and actually think about how we operate and maintain and manage the system. So that's really what traffic operations was about, was changing that culture at the DOT, uh, making us more focused on how we operate the system and manage traffic. So that's kind of my background at the DOT for the last nine years. So I'm really excited uh, about joining the Nashville DOT. Um, I'm very much focused on on our use of. Uh, technology to manage traffic, but also uh, Vision Zero. You'll be hearing more about our Vision Zero action plan uh, coming up this week. So that is something I'm, I'm, I'm excited about, about the opportunities uh, in the very uh, pro proactive stance that we're taking with Vision Zero. So I'm looking forward to that. I do have some sombering numbers uh, to share with you this morning with regards to fatalities on our system. So uh, just looking year to date, uh, year to date as of this morning, uh, we're up 10% uh, in fatalities in, Na in the Nashville area compared to last year. Last year we were up 8%, uh, almost 9%. So we are on a, we are on a bad trend currently here in, in Nashville, Davidson County area. So we really, uh, you know, this vision, what you'll see with the Vision Zero plan is very proactive as far as our action steps and it is our intention really to become proactive instead of reactive when it comes to identifying opportunities for uh, mitigation strategies, be it through engineering, uh, through education strategies, through working with our partners such as TDOT, such as the, the Tennessee Highway Safety Office and other of our partners here in Metro Police and others here in the, in the Nashville area. So I'm just very excited to be joining the Nashville DOT and uh, that, that's all I really wanted to come and introduce myself to you. Thank you very much. Uh, commissioners, y'all have any comments towards Mr. Freeze? I, I have a particular comment because when yes, I've sir. gone to some cities where I think they have better pedestrian situation, what we have with sidewalks, et cetera, you know, my observation is that not only are the pedestrians trained seem to be trained to use the system to avoid stepping in the crosswalks, et cetera, at the wrong time. It right. seems like the cars are equally trained. And my observation here is that uh, people just kind of do what they want to to take advantage of it when they can. So, yeah, that, that human behavior is very interesting. Uh, and, and we are, I would agree with you that, that people learn to deal with accommodations that we do not have, but that's However, you know, we still need to be proactive in how we supply those accommodations and mitigate the risk uh, that some of the situations that people get into uh, as being a pedestrian here in Nashville. Yeah. Any education would be great. And one of my, I'll just say this as a personal prerogative, a pet peeve of mine are the people who walk with their back to the traffic and any education along that line. I know that's been an issue that the police have brought up right. in, in the past, but uh, you know, as a scout leader, you're taught when you go uh, hiking on the roads, you, you walk facing the facing traffic. traffic. It's in the handbook there. So yes, sir. any education on that matter would be appreciated. Yes, sir. Yes, council member. Hello. Um, Hello. Can you speak to just organizationally? I know Ms. DeMassimo shared... Um, for the first time in a really long time, we finally got to see an org chart, um, whether right. for Public Works or NDOT. Um, that was right. the first, having served on the Public Works Committee for six years now. It's been something we wanted to see for a long right. time. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you speak to, in your role as chief engineer, um, I know our department will be getting a new director in mid-January. That's correct. Um, in particular to this commission and over kind of what we have purview, um, can you speak to kind of 
who you are um, supervising. So, yes. you know, there's education, but I, I would say to Chair Green, it's, it's important, but it's about this much, and infrastructure should be about this much. And right. so can you speak to infrastructure uh, delivery and kind of how you're... Um, yeah, how we're organized currently. Yes. Please. Yes, ma'am. So we are currently organized, and we have a infrastructure delivery, development and delivery section, which is under over the which the chief engineer is over. We also have an operations uh, component of the uh, DOT, which Philip Jones is over. Some of you may already know Philip. So as far as delivery, uh, infrastructure delivery and deployment, we have a planning, a transportation planning section that is that really digs into the planning side of it. Uh, you know, early planning, early, like the Vision Zero plan, for example, is, an, is something that they've been working very hard on. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's the traffic calming program that has has a planning aspect which they're involved in as well um, uh, the next section that we have is the uh, Development services section which is really really active with all the developments that we have here in Nashville in Davidson County So really supporting development supporting traffic studies supporting uh, you know really uh, making sure that we're looking at those traffic conditions that those new businesses are going to generate, but also the conditions of the SPs that are developed and approved through there. So there's a lot of work going on in, within that section. Then we have, um, we do have a traffic engineering section that uh, some of you are familiar with. We have Andy Smith, uh, who's in that section actually looking at, you know, pavement and marking and, and traffic signals. We have a lot, a lot going on in that section. And we are still, I will say this, um, we are uh, still evolving as we go along. There are some additional changes that will likely happen uh, in the future when, when Diana, uh, our new director, comes in in January. So that, but right now we are really focused in the, underneath me in, uh, as the chief engineer, really focused on that, at that early planning, the design and the delivery aspect of uh, the Nashville DOT, supporting capital projects. We actually are currently Advertising for a capital project engineer, which is very important. That's like high on our list uh, at the DOT to, to take over really the capital projects in terms of everything uh, as far as uh, major infrastructure capital projects to smaller capital projects like traffic signal capital projects as well. Uh, Jeff Hammond, uh, who you have on this have on this um, this commission, is is over our active transportation, and what I mean by that, that's really our our uh, walk and bike plan, and also our our sidewalk planning and development, all the way into in in that program. So, okay, and just so I understand, how many people do you have that you directly manage? So I approximately right now, I have approximately forty five people, okay. uh, and that that is changing a little bit here in the future. Okay, and so are you and Mr. Jones peers? We are peers. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Okay, and then who manages then, um, uh, you know, development review? Because we do. So you, you yes, ma'am. Okay, so that's under your umbrella. Correct. As is capital project. That is correct. Delivery. Okay, because I think for colleagues here, development review, right? As we see, like with the Joyland mixed use office, mm -hmm. whatever, like if. If we don't, at development review, require people to have places where they can drop off, deliver, right. whatever. We were just talking. It gets into the public realm. And so I'm interested in, you know, that um, uh, working on that kind of from an engineering perspective. Um, mm -hmm. so, so I guess what I'm hearing from you is the org chart, though it was long, long, long awaited, it's still in flux well, somewhat. I would say that... Likely, our new director will have have more input on our org chart in the future. So I, I would say what we have now is, is set up, and it and is in. Um, we were like we. She'll likely have an opinion on a lot of that stuff. So there will be probably be future modifications to that org chart as we go along. We're still evolving as a DOT, so we're still learning in the process. Okay. Thanks so much. Thank you. Any other comments for Mr. Freeze? Yes. Thank you very much. We've been fortunate with great staff here, um, and it's been my observation. We can pass all kind of recommendations, but like the chairman said, it, it, I, 
it's hard to teach people to follow up the law that four way right. stops are not suggestions and pedestrian walkways, you know, that have the flashing new light, they're the law, but right. So it's very, very hard to educate our fellow citizens. <laughs> so good luck. Yeah. All right. We wish you the best and we'll look forward much. to seeing you back. Yes. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned technology. Mm -hmm. um, so how do you see that being used to improve our systems here? Is that more in syncing of lights or? So there's a lot of things, but yes, that, that is one of those foundational items is really our signal technology. Our, mm -hmm. And you know that we're in the process of deploying a traffic management center. Actually, here in the Howard School is, is one of the locations that, that is being in development. So yes, that is that is like the backbone of what we're talking about when we talk about traffic management here in Nashville. Having the right communication systems in place, and I know that ITS uh, and Metro ITS is a big part of that, and they're a big, they're a big partner of ours, and actually have a great network, robust network. So we're actively coordinating with them to make sure we have that right communication system in place to control our signals. We do have uh, quite a bit of, of uh, communication to our signal systems now, but moving to that more live, real-time uh, condition where we can really proactively manage that, that system is where we want to go with our traffic management system, mm -hmm. our, our TMC that, that, that we have in development. So technologies, um, there will be some technologies that we look at as far as how we push travel information out to the public when they're on the road to, to know what routes to take. Uh, you know, some of that, as you know, there are a lot of crowdsource providers out there in there, but also this involve, that involves us working with those crowdsource data providers as well. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole, I could talk here for the next 30 minutes <laughs> and geek out about that, but maybe, next, maybe sometimes if you let me come back, I can actually mm -hmm. talk about some of that technology in more detail. Okay, great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Okay, again, thank you, Mr. Freeze, for coming. We'll look forward to working with you. Thank you for forward. having me, really thank appreciate you. it, thank you. Thank you, council members and, and commission members. All right. And so next anybody, we're have Chris. anybody else have anything for the good of the group? Mr. Sandwich is going to present. Oh, we have okay. We have Chris Sandwich. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. Next. Sorry. Uh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Chris Sandwith, um, and I am handling the day-to-day -day operation of the traffic calming program uh, with NDOT. Uh, a little background on me: I am a, a Nashville native. I studied. Uh, engineering at the University of Texas and uh, started with NDOT, uh, working underneath uh, Mr. Derek Haggerty in uh, September. And uh, when he left uh, NDOT, I took over the traffic calming program, handling the day-to-day -day, uh, from him. So I just wanted to come in today and give an update on uh, where we're at with the announcements from August. Um, I'm sure most of you all have seen, but we announced uh, a new group in December, and we'll talk about that. And then also, uh, talk about moving forward uh, with the traffic calming program um, with the application process opening in January and uh, the moving forward with that. So Brad, if I can get the next slide. Um, so just to give some background, um, the next slide is going to be a map uh, showing the selections from August of 2021 and showing the current status of where they're at. Um, so uh, there'll be four colors with it. Uh, if the neighborhood's colored red, that means that we are still uh, working with the neighborhood and council members to set up our initial meeting with the neighborhood and to, uh, to get the process started to get the design. Um, blue will be that we are in the concept design. That means that we've had our initial meeting with the neighborhood, but we are still uh, working to uh, finalize that initial design to show the neighborhood. Um, yellow is uh, that we have sent our initial concept with the neighborhood. Um, that either means that we have a meeting coming up to meet with the neighborhood uh, in regards to the uh, starting the petition process, or that means that we're working with the neighborhood to ensure that our initial design is good uh, with the neighborhood. And if not, what changes uh, we need to make. And finally, green means that we have shown the design to the neighborhood and we have started our petition process. Um, so Brad, if you wouldn't mind going to the next one. Um, so a little hard to see with uh, 
with the full map, um, but we have listed on the side the neighborhood names um, as well as where we're at with each neighborhood. Um, Brad, if you'd move to the next slide. Um, so this goes into more detail of where we're at with each neighborhood. Um, so uh, we're still working with three neighborhoods to get the initial meeting set up from August. Um, with 11 of them, we've had our first meeting and figured out the, or uh, worked with the neighborhood to get an idea of what sort of traffic calming design they'd like, um, which is where a majority of the neighborhoods are at right now. Um, with six of them, we've sent them our initial design and we either have a future meeting set up to meet with the neighborhood and start the petition process or we're working to uh, get the design right for the neighborhood. And finally, with four of the neighborhoods, uh, we have started the petition process and are working to get to the 70% uh, of homeowner approval to install the traffic calming devices. So, um, so on December 1st, we announced uh, 25 more neighborhoods that were selected. Um, these neighborhoods were selected through our prioritization process, which I will go in more uh, a little bit later. Um, we are, I believe we have our first initial meeting with one of the neighborhoods tonight, and we will be doing more of those through December and moving into the new year. Um, and we'll move through the process in the same manner that we are moving through with the August 2021 selections. Um, so coming up in January, we'll have our next application period. That'll be January 3rd through uh, the 28th. Um, with that, there will be 244 neighborhoods with previous applications. Those are automatically rolled over to this period. We'll also open the period for any new neighborhoods that uh, haven't applied previously. Um, so we have a list on our traffic calming website of the neighborhoods that we already have the selection for or already have an application for and um, neighbors can look on there, make sure their neighborhoods already, if it hasn't, doesn't already have an application that they can submit one themselves. Um, and then once the application period is closed, uh, we will reprioritize. Um, and so our prioritization, it is uh, a qualitative, pro qualitative process uh, weighted on 40% the crash rate per mile over the last five years, 30% um, on the vehicle speed, specifically looking at the difference between the 85th percentile speed and the posted speed limit, 15% um, on neighborhood destinations. This includes like parks, schools, community centers, and 15% on active, active transportation. So that is um, bus stops, uh, greenways, bikeways, um, if they don't have sidewalks, if they're having to use the street, them, street itself to walk to their destinations. Um, so with this prioritization, this is the current policy that we're using. Um, as uh, Mr. Freeze said earlier, um, with Vision, Vision Zero and the action plan coming out, there may be changes to the future prioritization and selection of neighborhoods, but uh, this is specifically the prioritization model that we use for our December selection. Um, so that is everything I have update-wise with the traffic calming, but... Quick question. Yes, sir. Um, I think some of the first traffic calming programs went into effect maybe within the last two years. Um, have, what kind of, what kind of post-mortem or lesson learned have you taken from some of the initial traffic calming programs? Yes, sir. What um, has worked well and what doesn't seem to work well? How would, how are you modifying things going forward based on those le lessons? Yes, sir. So uh, with Mr. Haggerty, uh, we revamped our traffic calming program in uh, 2019, I believe. Um, and with that, we've taken more of a focus on vertical measures uh, such as uh, speed cushions and speed tables in the road instead of um, how they had previously enacted with markings and with uh, putting speed limits on the street. Um, so we've noticed that um, with a lot of neighborhoods, they have uh, requested those vertical measures like the speed cushions and speed tables to 
uh, use a more engineering approach to uh, helping with speed and cut through traffic in neighborhoods versus uh, you know, having a radar sign or markings on the road to make people aware of speed limits. Any other comments? Yes, council member. Thank you, Mr. Sanwith. I really appreciate it. I know you've stepped right into it, Mr. Hagger <laughs> Haggerty departed, so it's all kind of landed on you. Um, your slide showed, and I think council knows well, um, the kind of the latent demand or the backlog for this because so for so many years this was an ineffective program. To your point, there were no vertical physical solutions. It was all paint and signs and um, and so forth. So I really appreciate the the path that we're on now. Um, that said, um, you know I know I've advocated as of other colleagues. We've got more money in the capital budget. We were very specific about there being two staff positions to support this. And I, as I understand it, um, Mr. Freeze, the other position is is open, and we're trying to hire for Mr. Sandwith to have a, a peer. Is that correct? We are in the process. Correct. That is correct. Okay, I appreciate that. Here. And so we've gotten the August program and you showed the progress on that where that is I appreciate that but I think what I've become a little bit concerned about council has increased the funding we have increased the staffing we brought the management in-house but now we have 244 neighborhoods in the queue and so um, I wonder just from an evaluative perspective operationally right mm -hmm. um, you know trying to get the right balance of how much we have internal metro staffing, how much we put in consultancy. Um, do you, I guess that's not really on you. That's probably on Mr. Freeze a little bit more from a managerial perspective. I mean, are we going to start to kind of track, you know, the, the time frame when we announce in August? I mean, I, I really appreciate this aggressive um, approach with the, the two that, that's meeting the demand of the community, absolutely. But on the council side, we want to make sure we're appropriately staffed and funded to support that. And I worry that we're gonna lag there. Like we've had this little ramp up and everybody's like, yay, we're actually doing this right now. <laughs> and then more people are gonna apply and um, you know, we're gonna get really behind. And, and we, we saw that with our sidewalks, right? Um, community demanded sidewalks, council funded sidewalks. We tried to make sure on the back end we had the implementation that we needed, but we were understaffed and we got behind. We had process issues and kind of here we are. So um, I, I really want us to stay on track with traffic calming. So can you speak to kind of what sort of evaluative stuff you'll be doing? Um, because that, that queue is really deep. Yes. So we have actually we've been talking about this here recently. Chris and I have been talking about what the uh, what the workload is currently and what the workload could be in the future as far as what we have already made as far as our investment in speed studies specifically that 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 takes a bit of effort to go out there and do speed studies for the applications as well so we are actually going through that evaluation process now to determine how much uh, we want based on the funding how much we can deliver with the current staffing levels and what we need to what we need to talk about in the future for more and as far as enhancing the program. So I think there's a, there's a lot of opportunities. This is a great program. One, one thing that I'll mention, and Chris may, may want to comment on this too, one thing that um, I've noticed is, uh, you know, through these, before these projects hit the ground, there is also, also a, petition, a petition process, you know, that goes out to the public. So sometimes that can be, uh, uh, you know, it, it can be a slower process, you know, to go through that petition. Mm -hmm. That position, that petition process for the na for the neighborhood. So that we've been thinking about what other opportunities there could be to accelerate that process yeah, uh, to get to a deployment quicker. I'd yes. appreciate that, and I would assert if it's an engineering decision, I'm not yes. sure why we have to get the people who live on the street to sign a petition. No, I, no, I, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you completely. Uh, the petition process is really to secure that neighborhood buy-in uh, when it goes out there. So. Later on down down the road, when we actually go out there and install and put an engineering solution in place, uh, uh, the neighborhood does not come back and say, you know, we are not we are unsatisfied or we did not want the solution. If the majority of the neighborhood would, so it it may be a low risk, but that is something that we do okay. to ensure that. 
I appreciate that. I just want to make sure from council perspective before operational budget that, you know, if you need yes. more staffing in this area to deliver that, um, you know, we know that on the council side. And Thank you so much. Sorry, just to add to Ms. Freese's comment about, you know, neighborhood buy-in, uh, you know, there are, we have had neighborhoods where in the previous iterations of traffic calming, we put rumble strips or um, the old style of the vertical measures, not the current rubber style that we use and um, have had neighborhoods come back and, uh, you know, it was a few people in the neighborhood that were very excited to have this versus the entire neighborhood actually not really feeling that being in support of it. So it's just uh, to make sure we have to... As Ms. Right, and, and I appreciate that, but the onus is also somewhat on the council member to work with you to right. educate the community and make sure, kind of get the feel of, of where the neighborhood is. And I would assert the last one that I remember that was really an uproar over was in Woodmont Estates and Green Hills, and I feel like that was a decade ago now at this point, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think I hear a lot of talk about remember that time, and, um, you know, I think things are evolving. I mean, we, yes. you know, our inboxes are full of please, 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 can we have speed cushions? Because I think heretofore we did kind of the old really bump you, bounce you kind of a thing. Um, whereas the speed cushions, they're great. They have low profile. I've gotten zero negative feedback from the community about them. So um, kudos to y'all for using those. Any other comments? I have one last question. And yes. that is, um, how do you assure, what's the process to try to assure some equity in the, in the city with traffic calming? Because, you know, we know that Certain neighborhoods are far more active than other neighborhoods so that, you know, the, the resources just don't end up with those who have the, who are the most organized or the, uh, yes, uh, the loudest. How do we, what's the process to try to ensure that neighborhoods that may need this but do, are not organized get access to resources? Yes, sir. So uh, with our traffic calming prioritization, that is our uh, main way when we have applications, we make sure we're picking based off of our uh, qualitative model, the uh, most in need neighborhoods. Yeah, I can add to that, Chris. So so it's really a uh, based on the, the greatest risk, you know, in our evaluation. And of course, no one, no neighborhood wants to be told that their uh, their application is lower risk, yes. but that's what we're you know we we try to make it a very equitable process in identifying the the highest risk when we prioritize and rank those to get those out. Okay, all right. Well, thank. I can just say, I have been on the traffic commission for eleven years. The just in the last couple of years, is finally feeling like there's something when people come to a meeting that there's actually something to offer them, whereas in the past it was stop signs and, and paint. So, um, and maybe they don't have to do what someone recommended to me, which was accidentally spill concrete, you know, to create your own speed bump. So, um, no, no, that's not, that's not, but that's been suggested to me by, uh, by folks in the past. So, but thank you very, very much. We'll look forward to working with you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? Well, uh, first of all, let me wish everybody a very happy holidays, and it's hard to believe we'll see everyone next year in 2022. Make a motion to adjourn. Is there a motion? We are adjourned. Thank you. This has been a service of the Metro Nashville Network. If you would like to see this presentation again or for more information on this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.